right? We've got the fourth challenge here, and the arrangement of the stars um, is a little confusing at first, isn't it? It feels almost impossible, and that's when you know you're dealing with a good challenge, when it feels impossible. So you might just step back and say, what do I want to happen? What do I wish would happen here? And I kind of wish myself, I'm like looking at this, I'm thinking it would be really nice if there was a ramp, kind of an exponential marble slide that went right like this way. And then somehow stopped near the star and then cut back this way and then cut back again. Can I do that? Can I have a slide that comes down? maybe ends about here, and another slide that comes back, ends about here, and another slide that comes this way. I'm thinking three slides. Now, I've seen students do this in many different ways, but that's just the way I'm thinking about it. And you might stop and say, well, is there another way? Because I've seen lots of approaches, and they're just fantastic. I just start with the parent function, y equals 2 to the x kind of get my bearings. I'm thinking, well, that's not right. I want it to go down steeply and then flatten out this way. I want to kind of reflect it over the y-axis, so I need opposite x points. Whatever they were before, I want them now the opposite, something opposite, that's a negative. Now I feel much better about this. Now I want to move it up. I want to slide it up. I want to translate it. So I'm going to add to the output to raise those values. How much do I add? I'm not sure. I'm going to add D for um, my vertical translation and I'm going to slide it up so I get kind of what I'm looking for. Now I'm getting somewhere, right? This is getting kind of that slide effect, but I want to move it this way. Or I can flatten it out a little bit more, right? So if I lower it here, what happens if I mess with this base? What if I make it 1.5? 1.4, does that work? Well, either way, even if I lower it, although I like this one a little bit better, so I'll leave it at 1.4, I want to move it to the right. How do I do that? Well, adding to the output didn't help. This is some value, it's some output. If I add to it, it goes up or down, but if I add to the input, to the x values, I know I can make it move left or right. So. I put parentheses around the exponent here, so I can write an expression, and I want to add to it. How much should I add? I don't know. I'm going to add a variable, c in this case, and I'm going to move it around until I get what I'm looking for. How about right there? That looks great. And this is my first slide, except, oh no, I don't want it to keep going. I want it to stop there. So where is there? Where do I stop it? I'm not sure exactly. How about 18 right down here? That's 18. So I'm going to say my domain restriction. I want it to stop at 18. So I don't want to consider x values larger than 18. I only want to consider x values that are less than 18. And now I'm getting somewhere. What do I do next? I don't know. Let me just get that second slide in. I have that vision of a slide coming down this way. And I know that if I type in my parent function, right, that gets me a little bit of what I want. It's just too far over to the left. I want to move it to the right. So I want to do exactly what I just did before. And this time I'm going to um, add. I can't add the same C value. That'll, con that'll be a problem. I'm using C up here. So I'm going to add a different C. I like using C. I'm going to call it sub. I'll say 2, my second C value. To get that subnotation, I just typed shift and then the line button, which is next to the plus key. And I now have another C value, which is for the second slide. I can move this around. I know I need to essentially get to go to the right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're getting somewhere, but I need to go a little bit further. And negative 10 wasn't enough. So how about negative 20? Not enough. Negative 40? Not enough. Negative 100? Hmm, that's not helping. So let's think about what's going on here. Oh, it's because my slider was stuck. So I want to get to go over there. The slider was stuck at negative 16. And I want to move it up. Well, I know I can add D, I'll add D sub 2. And I'll just move it up until I get what I want. Oops, that's C. I'm going to put C above D. I want it to be alphabetical. Have it move up, up, up. Oh, getting there. 
but you can see that it's kind of too jammed. The marbles might get stuck, so I'm going to move this over some more, and then move it up some more, and kind of just keep tweaking it until I get it to work. And let's see how we're doing. Let's launch it. Well, that's kind of cool. That's looking good. All right, it makes it. But we have to get to the third one, right? I need this slide to stop somewhere over here. Let's say around, what's that, 2? So I don't want to graph anything below 2. So x has to be bigger than 2. First it was a less than, now it's a greater than. And I'm getting somewhere. I just need one more to go. What am I going to do? I'm going to type in y equals 2 to the x. And that's not going to work. So if we go back and think of what we just did, we can make this happen. I want it to, this is a growth function, I want it to be a decay function, so I want to reflect it over the y-axis. That's going to be a little bit too low, and then I want to raise it up a little bit. And you might not even need a domain restriction. So try that out, get that reflection going, and then make it move up or down until you get what you want, and launch those marbles. Alright, hope this helped.